Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to this is now I'd say episode three of Let's Talk, and I have with me uh, Les Paul Sanez. And uh, dude, thank you so much for for joining me today in this talk. Um, first of all, how are you doing? Come on, Steph. Oh, hey, man. I'm I'm doing well. I'm I'm still alive. <laughs> Same, same because yeah. of everything that's been happening, but I'm all good. That's good to hear, man. It's good to hear. So um, for the people that are, you know, I guess tuning in for the first time, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure like people that are in the dance community know, uh, know of you and know who you are, or at least have had some experience with you. And then that's, that's already good to hear. I'm sure there are other people that uh, might be meeting you for the first time. Um, I guess for context, like uh, I've known less for a while now, but I don't know, early GC days, you know, and uh, <laughs> when you were still starting out. And I remember, dude, I remember watching you at the time. I was like, man, this guy is hungry. Like, parang, he's taking classes. He's, and, and you were the kind of student that was like, not just like taking classes that you were comfortable with, but you were taking classes that you struggled with and that you, you sought that out. And so I was, you know, in my head, I was just like, like, that's, that's the right approach to sort of take, you know? So wanted yeah. to ask you, um, I mean, maybe just fill everybody in. What's your, what's your early, um, experience or introduction into dance? I would say it's within high school, high school mm -hmm. days, third year high school days when we were just uh, performing for the, for the school. It was about um, mid third year, I'd say mid third year to be exact, or fourth year, early fourth year. Because back then, Brian Puspos era days, eh. start of Brian Puspos era days, and most of my friends, my peers, were a fan of dance. Ako, I just dance based on a field demonstration type of thing. So mm -hmm. that's just once a year. Mm -hmm. So sila yung mas nag-invite sa akin para mm -hmm. mas mag-enter, mag-dive into dance. Mm -hmm. Ako, ano lang ako, parang saling kit-kit lang dahil mm -hmm. friends ko sila. So ako, parang na-initiate lang ako. Mm -hmm. ganun, ganun lang ako na in love muna eh. Pero mas nag-dive deep siya nung nag-college na sa San Beda because you know San Beda has a uh, dance troupe mm -hmm. so hanggang ngayon may nandun pa rin Beda mm -hmm. Dance Theater mm -hmm. so yun dun, dun mas na dun mas na form yung idea ko about dance because back then ang idea ko lang about dance is you know there's a choreography um, you watch it on TV uh, production and then you copy it you copy it then you perform it in your school done mm -hmm. you know I don't really have an idea na parang oh okay this is Oh, there's a way to create choreography. Ganto yep. pala gumawa. Mm. Or parang ay pwede pa lang gawa ng kanta yung ay gawa ng sayo yung gantong kanta. Yep. Ah, okay. So parang mm -hmm. dun, dun yun yung overview ng nangyari sa akin. Yeah. Tapos ayun. So you were you were ano, first talaga first exposure was more of sa parang choreography, putting putting steps together and performing it. Mhm. Mm uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um uh you mentioned um Back in back in uh, this was uh, uh, high school, right? What um yes. what was there a trigger? Na parang you said okay, I'm gonna because for me, for example, like a lot of people in my batch, right? Um, you know, for me personally, it was you got served when that movie came out. Parang it just exploded in terms of oh, we can dance like this. Um, for other people, maybe in the next generation, it was step up. Um, I mean, I don't know for you, I don't know if it's maybe a movie or like parang you saw a certain performance or, or it was just always dance was just kind of always there. Merong parang um trigger to get you sort of like, okay, I'm gonna kind of try this out? Oh, to be honest, talagang wala. Wala. Mm -hmm. I mean, yung you got served or step up, it wasn't in me nung, nung simula. Parang, I was just doing it because it feels good talaga. Yun lang. Pero yung trigger point is more so kaya ganun pa rin ako sumayaw ngayon is more on a personal perspective. Yeah. When it with regard to relationships, you know, back then in high school you have relationships. Yeah. And then syempre pag graduate mo ng high school, your relationship continues at until college. So yung relationship mo sa high school na iwan. Mm. So parang ganun syempre, you have some complications happening and then ayun, nung mm. nangyari yung nung nasa college ako, things broke down. So parang mm. ako sabi ko, "Damn, what what what, what am I going to do? I mm. only have dance and legal management because mm. course then ito tapos ang ibang pang ibang paraan ko lang to distress would be playing video games i guess but mm. it's not ideal for my course nung time na yun kasi ang daming nangyayari first time kong magte ng mga law subjects tapos ha wala akong time so dance lang talaga mm. eh nung time na yun i was given chances to choreograph 
And so I was able to like express myself in dance. Although yeah. physically it wasn't it wasn't good <laughs> when you look back. When you look back now, <laughs> parang mm, I thought that was good enough. Pero nung time na yon, it was good enough. Nung uh-huh. time na yon, it was uh, fulfilling. Uh-huh. And feeling ko yun yung turning point na parang kaya ako mas nag-dwell into choreo because I can always see myself na parang okay, this song, this relates to me. I'll do something with mm-hmm. this. Parang mm-hmm. So it was really like for you that outlet talaga, no? Parang, you know, mm-hmm. especially the, the music was the driver. Na parang if there was a song that you related to, that's it kept you in dance. Kumbaga. Right. Uh-huh. You know, I think it's... um. It's super. I I love that. Uh, you know that that take. Cause, um, so for me, for example, when I, when I first started back in uh, in high school, um, obviously you got you got served, and then you had different styles. Like you had, you know, you learned popping, you learned a bit of breaking, um, and all these other like kind of specific dance styles. But for some reason, I could never like, for example, um, just stick to one. Like I I could do popping for a bit. I mean, I did breaking. I think the first thing was I did was breaking. But like. I could only but get so excited about the same break beats over and over again. And I remember mm-hmm. I was telling my friend, I was like, oh, do you listen to those break beats like all the time? And he's like, no, man, I just use it for breaking. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, this is one of my friends. Uh, some people like it like all the time, but for me, because I like so many different types of music. So one of the things I like to do is like look at different types of music and then just, you know, discover how I can interpret it. You know what I mean? So parang, mm-hmm. for me, it's the same thing. I mean, you had your, um, your music, mo na parang, the message or how it relates to you, where you are personally. You have that. And for me, it was the same thing. Um, you know, I think in terms of more like meaning and depth, mine sort of came later in the years. Uh, but for me, at the beginning, it was just more like what the sound was like and I liked it. And right. You know what I mean? So, so yun, mag- maganda yun eh. Um, so, when, when, I, when I met you in uh, Group Central back then, like, was that you high school or college? Uh, college. I'd say uh-huh. second year. Second year. Okay, yeah. And you were just, you really starting to take classes at that time, no? Yes. So when, um, what, what, uh, what sort of was, you know, you've taken a lot of classes um, and you still continue to take classes. And what are, what do you think were some of the more important lessons that you pulled from these classes? I know that's a big sort of umbrella, but maybe you can pick mm-hmm. out like a few now you feel like are helpful. Right. Good thing I, I noted my answers on screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll be looking at the camera. I'll be looking there. Yes. <laughs> Rest assured. Yeah. This is pointed out very nice. Uh, so number one, I would say the best thing that I learned in uh, taking classes would be understanding your goal. Mm. Under Understanding your goal. Like, what is the importance of this investment? I I didn't see it first as investment dati. Parang mm. I've seen it as just katulad ng iba na mga tao na hobby or parang uh, just to have fun. Mm-hmm. Pero on the latter part, when dance is becoming or transitioning into a career for me, I've seen it as an investment. So that's one thing. At the same time, you can, you can see kung, mm, what's the purpose of dance for me. Is it for exercise or for me to have retentive memory? Yun ba yung purpose? So parang for me, that's number one, understanding your goal. At least you know what you're doing because at the end of the day, Siyempre, you're, you're, you're paying good money, so you need mm-hmm. to understand what you're doing with it. Mm. At the same time, I learned to try out different styles before settling down in yeah. uh, one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like what you said, when I was starting, I, I tried a lot of styles in Groove Central. All, also because I don't know kung ano yung pinapasok ko. Yeah. This is a new thing for me. When I entered Groove Central, it's the first studio I've ever been into. And it's the first time I've seen a lot of mirrors. Yep. And magandang floor. Because mm-hmm. back then, sa amin sa San Bedad, our floor was yung, yung <laughs> asphalto lang talaga. Asphalt, yeah. So we don't have that experience. Um, yun, pagdating ko doon, it was full of uh mga posters and something something like that na tungkol talaga sa dance so parang sabi ko mm-hmm. okay ano to mm. so i really had to i really had to attend lahat ng demo classes i really had to check it out kasi yeah. i don't know what i want yep so for me it's very important to try out different styles and i don't know if i don't know kung makakatulong if you ask other people about how they feel about that style kasi yeah. for me 
what matters is your own experience. Because some people kasi would say, hmm, hindi kasi ganito yung feeling ko sa gantong style kasi ganyan siya. Well, that's mm-hmm. for him. That's mm-hmm. for him to 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 say kasi mm-hmm. he already experienced it. What mm-hmm. I would suggest is you experience it for yourself. So mm-hmm. at least you have your own answer. So kung feeling mo hindi para sa yung gantong style, at least you tried. At least yeah. you gave it enough time. And then, okay. Yeah. Diba? You got to taste it. Yeah. And, yeah. And mm-hmm. siguro lastly, ang pinaka natutunan ko with classes on the on the latter parts of it would be observing how they teach and mm-hmm. when to stop and when to go on and dance. Kasi on the part of when to stop and when to go on and dance, a lot of teachers are always saying na, okay, first two lines stop or half of the class stop, half of the class dance. A lot of people are disregarding that that gift. And ako natutunan ko yun nung mga kalagitnaan ng pagtitake ko ng class. Kasi when I was first taking classes, I was always on the go. Always <laughs> fire. Parang okay. When, whenever I can dance, I'll dance. Pero na-realize ko that observing is a gift. Mm. And when the teacher wants to do it and show it to you, not because they want to show off, but because they want to show it to you, you you observe and you see na parang, ah, ganun. Kasi may mga bagay na yung ibang teachers, hindi nila natuturo yung mannerisms nila, pero yun yung nagpapaganda ng galaw nila. Mm. So parang ako, yun yung ninanakaw ko yeah. yun sa class. Imbis, yeah. yung, imbis yung tinuturo nila na sinasabi nila na parang, okay, raise this and raise that. I'm trying to observe, okay, gano'ng kataas to to make it look good sa mm. kanya? Mm-hmm. Is, he do, is he doing the same thing at, as I understood it? Mm. Or mas, mas, mas binababa niya pa to? So kung binaba niya to, ramdam ko ba dito yung, yung hatak? Mm. Kasi parang pag tinitignan ko siya, hindi naman niya ramdam na gano'n. So parang gano'n ko <laughs> na yeah. You observe how they teach and ewan ko, so, sobrang nag-stick lang siguro sa akin yung mentality na when we were given that is a beda na you observe the teacher from the tip of the hair up yeah. until the tip of the foot. So yeah. parang ako, lagi na siya natira. Parang, mm-hmm. Okay, as obsessive as it can be, I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. Ayun. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Um, I think you also, you know, brought up something really important, which is that, um, you know, sometimes you can take a class and there are going to be teachers who excel in communication and there are going to be some teachers who excel in demonstration, right? Obviously, it's great when you can when you can get somebody who does both really well, but there are going to be times where the person is really a, a demonstrator and, uh, you know, you're just going to have to pull, you're going to have to take a sit, step back and just observe. That's, that's I think, that's an important thing to, to think about. Um, you know, I wanted to expand a little bit on what you mentioned earlier, which is um, yung parang understanding your goal, right? So let's say for, for a dancer who's, who's doing it um, and taking these classes, what, what are some examples of goals that they might have for themselves when they're walking into these classes? Oh, for me, number one, ako kasi when I, whenever I take class, syempre, I think, lalo na ngayon na, syempre, you, you, you uh, invest that in that class using your own money. Back then, it was, syempre, my, my parents' money. Thank, thank you, Lord, for that. Pero ngayon, syempre, it's my money. So, I, I think of what will I take from the person. So, mm. syempre, I, I try to look at his works. I try mm. to look has, at his recent works and mm. see na parang, oh, this is his specialty. Oh, is this something that I want to specialize? Yeah. Or is this something that I just want to try just, just once? Mm. And siguro ang other branch non okay so if i like this class after this class will i invest it uh, will i invest on it again or mm-hmm. this is just one time mm-hmm. alam mo yon ganun ko mm-hmm. siya tinitignan na parang i know it's about having fun but at the same time i have to have a plan yeah. just for me to be able to know what am i doing with with my body at the same time because I, yeah. I i i believe na syempre we're athletes and you have to have a program that will give you the greatest um, answer, I guess, the greatest mm-hmm. answer. Kasi mm-hmm. pag parang masyadong all over the place naman, ang hirap, ang hirap mahanap yung identity. Like for now, for, for, for a person who, who's doing it as a career. Yeah. Pero for a person who's just starting up, I guess the, the, the right definition for understanding your goal is what do you want to get from that person? Yun lang. Yeah. You, don't need, yeah. you, need, you don't need to overstress about it, I guess. Mm-hmm. 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 
Yeah, like parang may mga little nuances that you just want to pull. Like if it's if it's the way they're performing it, if it's the little mm-hmm. parang nakita mo sa itong choreographer, oh his 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 accents are better, or this person's uh, parang the way his use of core is better. Yung parang those mm-hmm. little things that you want to pull out. Um, for me, uh, when I look at it as well, something I've realized, and I don't know if it's helpful for for other people watching, but like when you know, because now there's this, you know, sometimes you can get into a mindset of you know you come to class and then you memorize the combination as long as you as long as you're able to kill it at the end of it, you're good to go, right? Which I think right. in a lot of cases, that's, that's helpful depending on the industry that you're in, right? Like let's say you're in right. California, you're in LA, and that's what's required of you. Obviously, that's really, really important because you know, you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're sort of thriving in that industry, but there are going to be cases where that's different. And so one of the things that I've thought about is, okay, um, you know, other than just coming into a class and then let's say you're memorizing it and then you're trying to get the steps or the vocab, uh, one of the things that's been helpful is one, I, I call this like different uh, ways of learning. I have four of them. Um, and so like, for example, one of them is what I would say is memorization, right? That's like the first step. Right. But you go to class and you're, you're focused on picking, uh, you know, improving your pickup. How will you, how will you memorize the, the set? Uh, and so maybe you don't get the entire set perfect, but you're kind of working on how well you do that. Uh, the second thing is I would say is, um, which I think is probably the most important is your maturity of movement, right? So parang, this is now like sort of going into what you were saying, which is like capturing the little, the little nuances of, of how this person's moving, um, improving your movement really. Because like the, the, the danger, for example, of, of memorizing sets and being good at it is, is that sometimes you can just be a better memorizer and not right. actually improve the way you dance. You know what I mean? This is something right. I really believe in. So, so let's say that's the second one. So sometimes you might go in and say, all right, I might not memorize the whole set, but I'm coming here to pull some new movement out of it. Um, and then let's say the third thing um, is uh, what I would call uh, like maturity. Of, I'm sorry. The third thing outside of maturity of movement, this is a performance and execution, right? So this right. is now like the yung parang yung X, X factor, yung energy. Na parang, kasi the first two deals with you as uh, an individual, right? right. Um, uh, you know, you can be a technical dancer basically in, in that aspect. You can memorize well and you, you move really well. But if you have no, no passion, no, no, not saying you have no passion, but like the way, right, the right. way you present yourself isn't engaging. Right. It's, that, mm-hmm. it's that little parang X factor when you're watching like a talent show or any competition. Like, grabe ang right. yung Parang hindi nagsusoothe, hindi nagsusoothe mm-hmm. yung feeling. Yeah, like there's that, there's that, ooh, goosebumps, you know? So, right. yeah, performance and execution. And I think for me, the last would be um, team dynamics, which I think is probably more applicable to when you're doing like a, like a training session with a team. Uh, because right. in class, you're able to sort of focus on yourself as an individual. Those are the first three factors, mm-hmm. right? Memorization, maturity of movement, uh, performance and execution. That deals with you as an individual. But I think when you're now working on team dynamics, you might be good at all three of those. But if you're not aware of your spacing, you're not aware of your blocking, you're not aware of your levels, you're not aware of how your movement relates to everyone else, you know, and, and, and sort of like cleaning that up. Like, I think that's another, it brings another self-awareness also. So I think right. these are like, I don't know, like, uh, these aren't like written in stone. These are just things I've observed. Now, uh, you know, I think people can have that sort of approach when they're trying to learn things, you know, um, when you're, when you're going to a class now, and instead of thinking what new step you can pull, right. It's more of all mm-hmm. also like, what theoretically do I want to improve in terms of my skill sets? Um, but yeah, and, and I loved our, our conversation on that because you, you nailed it right there. It's just kind of like, you know, you have to understand first and foremost, when you're going to a class, what that goal is going to be. So that's right. a, that's a, that's a great, um, lead in. So I want to also ask, uh, this, which is, uh, you've taken all these classes. You even mentioned that when you go in, you, um, you know, you're trying to figure out how these, how the teachers are teaching. Now, when did you right. feel comfortable and think to yourself now, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to sort of step into a teaching role. I would say I have a mentor. I have a mentor back then sa GC days pa lang. I, I enrolled sa anya. His name is Eric Javier. For sure, you know him. For sure, you know him. But for My other teammate, people, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you guys know Eric Javier. Pero he's really a good dancer. And um, back then, I, I, when I was starting, syempre, I don't have a lot of ideas and things na pwede kong gamitin sa dance ko. Parang, I take class. After that, I'm nothing again. Parang, mm. ah, ano yung natutunan ko? Paano mm. ba gawin ulit yun? Kasi I was relying a lot on choreography for me to dance. Mm-hmm. Back then, I don't know how to freestyle. 
I don't know how to move just for myself in a yeah. way. So, mm-hmm. so pag nagtitake ako ng class, dun ko lang napaperfect yung craft or nahasa. Mm-hmm. So, sa kanya, ang ginawa niya sa akin is we dwell a lot on a lot of talks after class. Kahit tapos na yung class namin nun, mm. he really extended his arm for me and like really mentored me. Because I was the type of person that, no, I not was, I am still, I am the type of person that would really say it straight. Na parang, mm-hmm. can you please mentor me? Or can you please teach me how to do this? Not because I'm sucking up, but because I really just want to learn. And back then, yun she, yun she, na parang sinasabi ko, I want to move like that. I want to turn like that because he, he turns really sharp, di ba? He yeah. turns really sharp. Yung, yung, yung turn niya na pencil turn, yung pencil turn niya sobrang linis, pero mm. sobrang tahimik. So, parang sabi ko, paano yun? Mga ganun-ganyan. Yeah. So, a- a- ako, ang, ginagaw- ang ginawa niya sa akin, there are times na may class kami sa GC, tapos ako yung pinagtuturo niya ng choreo na naturo niya na. So, kunwari, um, normally, di ba, I hope people here in GC or other studios can relate, na when when the teacher has already taught all the pieces, syempre, nabablock na ganito, ganyan. Some students minsan umahabol sila kasi di ba parang late and rolly mm-hmm. ayan so darating sila naturo na so minsan ang uh, ang sasabihin niyan oh 30 minutes 30 minutes before class o oh, less turo mo muna kay ganto yeah so ako nabibigyan ako ng ng task na parang uy tiwala sa akin si coach yeah. sige gagawin ko nga mm. tas syempre ma-observe ni coach sa mismong class na kung naturo ko ba ng maayos kasi kung alam nung tinuruan ko Di ba? Mm-hmm. Tapos, at the same time, na-experience ko din na mag-assist. Mm, yeah. Na-experience ko din na mag-assist. So, parang ako, dun ko na pulma yung yung thought na, okay, sige, parang eto, mini-mentor niya na ako. Tapos, may al- alam ko, tinanong ko yun one time eh. Pero sa beda pa lang ako nun magtuturo. Sabi uh-huh. ko, tingin mo ba, coach, pwede na ba ako magturo? Pwede ko bang itry? Mm. Tapos, ang sinabi niya sa akin na advice, Sige, magturo ka, pero simulan mo muna sa mga tao nyo sa loob. Kumbaga, mm. yung internal muna. Mm. Yung bago, before you even make money out of this, you try it out with your own people. And then sabi ko, okay, sige. So yun, dun, dun nagsimula yung, yung building of myself in terms of getting myself out there and having the guts to post a class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's great because you know, like you mentioned, you sort of went through the assisting phase first, you know, mm-hmm. and and you got to see firsthand that parang all right, somebody's trusting me now to be able to teach this, and you you will find out the month from there, you know, it's it's really like a uh, a trial, na parang uh, am I good at this? How can I improve? Things like that, you know. We I think we all as teachers we kind of go through that. You have to be obviously a great student first, and and even I would say continuously a student even after you start you start teaching. Um, uh, you know, even for personally for me, we, we went through hours of just assisting um, some of our seniors, uh, you know, to, to see how they coach, to see how they train, uh, get pickups and feedback from how they communicate to people and, and, uh, and then find, because it, you know, and, and I, I know you know this, which is the fact that, that teaching is such a different skill than just being a, a great dancer or choreographer. You know, it's really right. something you really have to work on. Um, that's cool, man. So, so let's talk about... Uh, uh, now, you know, so you started in high school um, and then you had some experience with the team there. Um, obviously, throughout your career, you've also been able to be part of different teams. And then you've also sort of built your own um, journey as a solo dancer and a solo choreographer. So when we look at just, uh, you know, because there are some people who are able to navigate both. Some people who are purely, uh, you know, individual dancers and some people who are also uh, solely um, a part of a team dynamic. So how, how different is the team dynamic from the solo journey and what kind of learnings do you think you can pull from those two different journeys? Oh, I would say in my experience, it's very different. The both worlds are really very different because the way I see it, when you're in a team, um, let's just say, should I compare it to a state? 
when we see a state, it's it's imaginary. It's imaginary. Like mm. when I say there's a team, a team is an imaginary person. Mm. And so I believe that at, there's nobody bigger than the team. Even the leader is not bigger than the team. The officers are not bigger than the team. And the members are sure as well not bigger than the team. So mm. ako, the way I see it, we all adhere to one one thing. And there is that compromise. Mm. You know, even even if you have your own goals or your own view of what's beautiful or not, mm. you must compromise because that there this is the vision and mission of the team. Yes. That's why it's very different from being a solo artist, because in a solo artist, you are just for yourself. you 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 just do it because you want to do it. Yeah. And the pros and cons of it of it is just mainly for me the effectivity of how you train yourself would be one because mm. at least in a team perspective you can in a good way you can compare yourself to your peers and you could see na if you're doing it effectively diba? Siyempre, as dancers we we imitate what we see mm. like how children do when they see their parents diba na parang oh ginagawa niya to oh gagawin ko rin to oh pares kami Parang yeah. ganon. Mm-hmm. When we're in fact in, in a solo journey, you don't have anyone to compare your journey with. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's so happy na ikaw, when you're training alone, dun papasok yung due diligence mo to what? Am I training enough? Mm-hmm. Am I training the way I should train? Or am I, sl- am I slacking off even though I'm dancing for like two hours now? Am I mm-hmm. slacking off? Alam mo yun, parang for me yun yung biggest biggest dynamic don. At the same time, I would say on the word compromise, syempre, those uh, in a team perspective, those are all different people with different views, mm-hmm. and especially with dance, that dance is very emotional driven, mm-hmm. very subjective view in terms of art. There is no one way of seeing it, so. On the word compromise, it bears a lot of stress because mm-hmm. it is a, a team can be a group of people that is there for each other, like mm-hmm. compromise, mm-hmm. or it could be a place of war, internal mm-hmm. war, and that's the thing. Because when you're inside that, there's a lot of people that you don't know how they think as well. Maybe you have you have a compromise in terms of like maybe say love for basketball mm. but alam mo yun hindi sa lahat ng bagay so malaki yung chance of like fire whereas when you're just solo i mean you you always say yes to yourself dahil bias ka sa sarili mo <laughs> so yun y- pwede mo siyang tignan na pro pero pwede mo rin siyang tignan na con kasi mm. dahil nobody's calling you out nobody you don't know if what you're doing is still correct Mm. So, parang for me, that's the that's the thing. That's the thing with team and solo. But if you're gonna ask me, if saan ko mas gusto, I feel like I feel like I, I expressed myself more on the solo thing mm-hmm. because I don't know. Maybe I'm just sanay lang talaga ako na solo. Pero mm. I enjoyed being on a team as well because. Yeah. Wala lang, I'm I'm also a, a social person more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. So parang it's fun seeing people. So ayun. Yeah. No, I think you you know, you said something really cool, which is just like um yung accountability, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that happens when you're with a team. Um, I think that's a big plus, right? But I think you're you're you get in you get energy from people around you. And like mm-hmm. you said, you're able to compare yourself and see how you know how you progress, and if the person's getting better, but it it sort of feeds into that mentality of like, oh, I, I can I can also get better too and grow with them. Right. Um, and at the same time, when you're solo, um, you know you have that accountability then, but the the it's so much harder to see because you're really only accountable to yourself, and you you don't know like I mean it's completely up to you on how how fast you're going to improve and and how you know how much you're willing to sort of uh, you know spend time on improving it. Um, you know, I, I super also relate with this as well because you know for myself when i first started uh, this is back in high school it was um you know it was just as an individual you know um we didn't really have uh this is back in the states we didn't have dance teams in my area we didn't have studios we didn't have dance competitions so literally when i would dance it was just 
you know, I didn't have mirrors. I would just dance in my garage and uh, there was no, there was no output that was required of me. There was no like posting a video. There was no um, like preparing for performance, literally just right. spend two hours just dancing. Uh, and then um, when I got exposed to the, to the environment here uh, to a first, you know, sort of a, a, an organized group, it was a really big change. And uh, at first it was, it was, it was different, but I, I grew to sort of love the experience as well because um, honestly, like sometimes dancing with yourself for yourself is, is one thing, but when you're dancing with other people and for other people, it's also, it's also a totally right. different dynamic, you know, and some like it makes the experience even much more worth it. Um, and then even after that, so this is now like after I had been directing for years, um, I, I was able to come back and then, and then just be able to focus on myself. And, and that, that in itself is also different growth because it, like, let's take it from the perspective of uh, whether you're a director or you're part of the team, a lot of it is like, okay, from a director's perspective, you are looking out to make sure everyone's improving. Uh, you're looking out for their growth and, uh, and the team's overall vision and goal and, and you know, sort of uh, what they have in mind. But when you're as an individual, you get to just explore. You know, there are a lot of things, for example, that I, like, I was able to do as an individual that I would have never done as a team, because it's either one, this isn't our strength, or, uh, or two, but we don't have the time to invest in this, or, or three, like we identify that, uh, you know what, this is, this is the identity of that. And so, and, and even some are more practical, like if you're doing a team, it's like, okay, this is going to work for stage, right? Or like, right. this is going to work for a performance, a competition. And you're in your, as an individual, like, it doesn't matter whether this works on a stage or not. I just want to do this, <laughs> you know, yeah. movement, and I, I want to try it out. So that, I think that's a really good take on in terms of like how, you know, you, we sort of see the different dynamics and in, in how a team and being a solo choreographer uh, and dancer operates. Now, you recently, uh, you know, I, well, I don't know if this is recent. It's probably been a, right. a year or so now, probably. But, you know, you, you were more known as a, as a dancer, uh, a choreographer and things like that. Right. And you started to explore the world of freestyle, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what, what was, um, what was the driving factor? What, how did, when did you decide to, to sort of, okay, I want to try this out and then why, what, what, what factored into your decision? Hmm. Well, I would say if we're going to talk about like the technical aspect, I would say improvement drove me mm, okay. in, in a way. Cause for the longest time I've been, I've been doing choreography and syempre, I'm not, I'm not the one to say na parang people don't know me, people don't know what I do. I know, I know, I'm aware and I'm thankful for that. But I, sh I want to shatter the glass. Mm. I want to shatter the glass of complacency. Mm. I want to shatter the glass of, uh, let's say, fake confidence to, mm. to say the least. Na parang, oh, people know me. I don't need to do much. Alam mo yun, mm. parang I want to do more. And mm. this is not because of you guys, I thank you for that, but this is because of me. Mm. And I want to find out the things that I can do. Mm. Kasi I truly believe na it's when I started to go to freestyle or going to jams, it was really awkward at first. Kasi mm. I don't know people. Parang mm. kilala ko lang sila sa muka, pero hindi ko alam kung how do I get started with this again how do i enter i mean i know how to dance but how do i start mm. and yun yung masaya doon doon na ako mm. na excite kasi mm. imbis na natatakot ako parang mas na-challenge ako na parang hmm, this is something i don't do often then why not just dive into it i guess and then people were actually shocked people were actually shocked nung sa world of dance freestyle battle three years ago ata Sa, sa, sa nakalimutan ko, sa UP Theater, they were shocked that I entered into a freestyle battle. And, oh, di ba nagko-choreo ka, bro? Eh, ako naman, yun yung naririnig ko lagi. Parang, uy, bro, di ba nagko-choreo ka? Sa choreo ka, bro? Choreo ka, ganda. Parang ako kasi, ang sa isip ko nun, oo, alam ko. <laughs> yung, yung ba yung tanong nyo? Ba't ako nandito? <laughs> pero, pero, the same, to say the least, parang ako, I just really want to, to just shatter that. And, I wanna think for myself na choreo, freestyle, it's just the same thing. Yeah. I don't know why, I, parang, parang dati, I don't know why there is that disparity 
between the two. It's just the same thing. We dance. Pero mm. bakit ganun? Parang, parang na, na engrave, I mm. would say, that's the right word, na engrave yeah. sa mentality ng tao na when you're just choreo- doing choreography, doon ka lang magaling. You, mm-hmm. you stick to that and that's that's it. Or when you're a freestyler, it's hard to make choreos kasi sanay lang ako mag-freestyle. Yeah, yeah. Pero yun, parang yun yung naisip ko. Yun. Parang that's not true. We just say that to ourselves. Yeah. So, ayun. Yeah. You know, it's it's great kasi parang, I, you know, ultimately, it's just it's just a, a, a path of self-improvement for you. Parang yeah. this is an area of your dance that you haven't unlocked yet, so you want to try that out. And, um, you know, to be honest, when I look at it, and I, I think this is a funny story, kasi parang, uh, I, I look at it as just like also maybe like the era or the time that we're sort of in. And I'll give you an example, which is this, like when I, when I was starting, starting to learn how to dance uh, back in high school, um, there were no studios that we could go to. I mean, they were just right. starting. Um, and so when I was learning how to dance, I was just learning how to dance, learning steps, you know, um, uh, trying to figure out music, how could I dance to mm-hmm. it. And then when I got here to the Philippines, there, suddenly they were like, uh, oh, you're a freestyler. And I was like, what does that mean? And they're like, you know, you don't need choreography. I was like, well, I dance, I guess, you know. And so for me, the idea of there being a separate, like, terminology for somebody who's just a freestyler and then somebody who does choreography, it made no sense to me really in the beginning. It was really like, <laughs> honestly, I was like, I was kind of like, oh, I thought that's what everybody did if we're a dancer, right? But now that's just my perspective. And let me clarify now, it's not a bad thing, right? Whether you're in right. one, one area or another. I think, honestly, right. this, this is what I was going to say is, I think it comes with the times, right? Because right, now right. We, we live in a time where there are more studios available, right? And so people's first introduction to dance can sometimes probably be more as a studio. Like that's their first right. exposure, right? And mm-hmm. so that's how they started learning. And that's fine. Um, you know, it just so happened that, you know, when I was starting out, it was just kind of like, you know, a lot of freestyle and you kind of work on that. Right. I got ingrained to the choreography after. So um I think it's great that you, you know you're you're able to sort of navigate both of those and and I had this discussion with uh, you know Jesse and James before and we were talking about how there's always going to be learnings from both and um, there's uh, it's it's ultimately not a discussion of which one is really better than the other it's right. just a matter there's, of there's nothing better like, yeah. really well, yeah. Like... yeah really it's just like okay I can get a learning from here I can get a learning from here and I can keep keep growing that way so that's that's a good good um good look at sort of uh you know the, the the learnings that you can get and and thanks for sharing that you know in terms of how you started to pursue that part of your uh, your dance craft now you uh obviously you went from choreography to freestyle so what would you say uh i don't know if you have specifics or maybe just a general idea of like concepts or learnings that you took from choreography you applied to freestyle or and then maybe vice versa na, na you know may mga bagong freestyle concepts ka naaral tapos you're like okay i can apply this to my choreography I would say that I'm super thankful for the old me <laughs> mm-hmm. in a way that back then when I freestyle, people say to me that my freestyle looks like a choreo. Mm. And so now people say to me now when I choreograph, it looks like a freestyle. And for me, that's a compliment because it means that the two worlds that were drawing in our heads, mm. na sinabi ko anina, I managed to put it in one frame now, mm. and and hindi na siya, hindi na siya something na parang okay pag nakin freestyle ako, siguro kaya siya mo kang choreograph dati is because yun lang talaga yung move sets na kaya ko eh. Yun lang talaga eh. Like, kahit anong pilit ko, kahit anong isipin ko na, oh, I have to be creative or I want to be creative, wala eh. Yun lang talaga yung kaya kong gawin noon eh. Tapos, looking at it now, na eto meron akong mga set of skills na natutunan ko along the years, even if I just want to do it with freestyle or if I want to do it with choreo, eto na yung lumalabas. It's mm-hmm. because this is the accumulated stuff. And, Funny, funny how the process worked for me kasi back then sa choreo, when I was in, still in freestyle, I always wanted to be just like one person. Just mm. like, maybe let's say like Brian or like Kiyomi or like Chris. 
And you wanted to be that type of person because those are the people you look up to in, in the Koryo realm, diba? especially in the world. Now you want to you want to be at the top, siempre, of what yeah. you do. Mm-hmm. Diba? When I introduced myself to freestyle, and that's the that's the term I introduced myself. <laughs> when I pushed when I pushed myself into going there because I just really want to know and experience me. Yeah. Just me. I just mm-hmm. really want to experience me and I just really want to get to know who who am I. Because mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of syempre, when we observe people with our phones, syempre, hindi mo man sinasadya pero nakukuha mo yung moves ng, ng idol mo. There is some time na parang minsan nandun sa isip mo na ginawa na to ni ganto, ginawa na to ni ganyan. Gina- parang alam mo yun, napaparanoid ka with thinking of what to put in your steps. When I, when I pushed myself in freestyle, nawala yun. Nawala yun. Kasi, I was able to accept, number one, the, 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 the learning I learned it for you, I was able to accept that my mind is formulating new things. Okay, so parang, ay, nagawa niya na yun, o sige, gagawa akong variation, yung hindi pa niya nagagawa. That's one. But at the same time, I was able to accept the freestyle perspective that na I don't care about kung ano man yung nagawa na nila. I'll care about what the music says to me. Mm-hmm. And if this is what the music says to me, ito yung sinasabi ng music, I'll go into this. Mm-hmm. Tapos nung nag-merge siya, when I create choreo, it doesn't have to be so complicated anymore. And I'm not saying complicated is not good. Complicated is good also. But in a way, Parang ako pag gumagawa na ako ng koryo ngayon, I don't have to like kill myself with imagining things. Na parang, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yep. Uh, I, have, I have to be super, super, super unique or something. Parang ngayon hindi na siya ganun. Yeah. Parang I just really have to, okay, what of these two things do I want to use today? In the first paragraph, eto lang ba? Ano ba? Second verse, eto lang? Ano ba? Kailan sila magsasama? Mm-hmm. And now I learned to compromise. Mm-hmm. I learned to compromise both things. Ayon. Yeah, you know that's what I, I really appreciated about sort of the the growth that you took it because I, I noticed it as well. Like, parang you know initially, I think your approach was very much um, you know you had like your certain pictures. You know, you you mm-hmm. you'd frame a choreography and you're like, okay, there's that part, there's this part, there's this part. And then at some point, I was I was you know noticing it's like, oh wow, it's getting really raw now. Like like sometimes there's a step, for example, that that we might interpret in terms of wordplay na ganito, and then maybe you just go, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, instead of thinking about the picture that goes with that word, I'm going to express the emotion that goes with that word. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, that's what I, I sort of started to see from a lot of what you were doing. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And, and then even while you were doing the, 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 the raw stuff, like, the, the, like you said, like, parang mas mukhang freestyle, you could still see the structure uh, when you wanted to. Na parang you could just insert it yeah. back you know, but okay, I want to do this. And so I think that's a, it's a good, um, I think for anybody watching, that's, that's one of the biggest, uh, uh, I think, you know, draws that you can take it when you, when you sort of try to delve in both of these crafts, um, right. which is, you know, and, uh, you know, like by mixing the two freestyle and, uh, and choreography. And, and a lot of people, like, I, I think everyone's choreo process is different, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I know uh, friends who are able to choreograph just based on vision, meaning, Literally, they can just sit down. But we'll be in a team. But if you choreograph the segment, that was I'm the one like dancing it, and then my friends are just like, "Okay, meron na ako." You know, <laughs> they have they have that. Ako naman, I have like my personal is like I I kind of have to I have to feel out the song first. But it's 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 two yeah. things. It I, I try to mix both both uh, the freestyle aspect because I think most importantly that adds the flow to it. You know, because mm-hmm. um, you know you sometimes you've ever you know you've ever been driving. And then you choreograph something, then you get to the studio and like, ah, di nag work pala. Ah, like, yeah. I could be moving a bit more, you know. So, so I have that sort of experience sometimes where uh, I'll try. I, I want to freestyle it first, but then I also have to match it with with a little bit of vision in terms of like, where do I want to take this? I uh, know because otherwise I'll be there for like, man. When I used to choreograph for the first time, I would freestyle for like an hour or two hours, and and I wouldn't remember anything. I'd only get maybe like four counts you know, or, or like one eight. And uh, uh, because I was so picky. And the, the thing is, like, sometimes when you freestyle, it's also some of the moments where, it, you know, because you freestyle so much, 
when you do something that's new, your mind, your body and your mind, you're like, oh, okay, that's new. Like, right. let me try and pick that up and try to apply. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. So I think, you know, again, it, there's, there's, there's benefits to both. And I think you did a good job of, of, of putting that together. And I think it's something that's helpful for everybody. Now, again, everyone's process is different. Uh, they might strictly be this or that. And, and that's, that's perfectly that's fine. fine. You know I, mean? I mean, that's the great thing about dance, right? So, um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, um, obviously we're now in this new um, uh, environment, uh, this new normal because of the pandemic and COVID. Obviously, it's a really unfortunate situation for a lot of people. Um, you know, a lot of challenges, a lot of, a lot of tough stuff that's, that's sort of happening. Um, and, uh, you know, it's both from a, from a health perspective, from relationships, from from finances and even opportunities, right? All, all of it is being affected. And uh, so what I wanted to sort of ask you a little bit is about how, um, you know, as a dancer, how do you find yourself adjusting to the current situation that we're in? Um, has there been adjustments or has it sort of been, I mean, is it not really that different and you're still kind of continuing your journey as you always do? Yeah. I would say there's, there's an adjustment for sure mm. because... Nung time na inannounce yung lockdown, mm-hmm. I was actually just here at home and no, actually I was I was on my way home na no, nung inannounce. <laughs> but in 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 the perspective nung nagsisimula yon, tapos I don't have any plans. Sure, we all don't have any plans. Mm-hmm. Nung lumabas yung mga classes abroad about ay uh, ko nare uh, Japan or mga classes sa France. Kasi siyempre, lahat affected eh. I took it as an initiative to take classes from them. Mm-hmm. Like, I enrolled myself in camps. I enrolled myself in uh, a class lagi sa house or groundwork. Mm. Whatever classes that I know would benefit me. And at the same time, I was taking online classes then Yung sa STG, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Mm-hmm. So, I would say na... It, it, it was really productive for me in a way sa akin kasi I was, I was actually formulating how would I be able to use it in a way na, na I mean, I already know na malalak ako sa bahay. Lahat tayo, malalak tayo sa bahay for a long period of time. And so I wanna, I wanna try and maneuver myself na parang, okay, how do I learn now? Because mm-hmm. there, there is no studio. I don't know what to do. I mean, I could, I could like, yun, yung sabi ko kanina na you train, you train alone, ganyan. Pero to a certain level ko lang yun magagawa. Siyempre, limited sources, limited cap- capabilities. Now, I need to do more. Tapos, ayun, na yung nakita ko ng opportunity sa ibang bansa ng mga class, I just enrolled myself. And luckily, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, I did that a lot. Up until, up until April, before ako mabasi with with um, CCP, mm-hmm. yung sa Wi-Fi body. Kasi do, doon, nung nagsimula na yun, it was really all about just that. Yeah. I wasn't taking classes much because mm-hmm. there were, there there's a lot of study going on as to mm-hmm. what I need to do for the piece. Pero before that, doon, puro class. At the same time, I was able then to teach. Yun, I was able to teach then free classes. I was able to provide free classes because that time I I knew that people just want to move and yeah. they don't have the... And I don't really want to charge. And I, I that's for my perspective because I know that people are also suffering. Yeah. I mean, we don't... We, we all have different privileges in life and... Yeah. I, I do accept that I have a privilege to 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 teach for free, and so I did. Tapos, ayun. Um, I was also able to like try the mentoring stuff, like the mm-hmm. one-on-one thing. Yun, it, it was fun. It was fun up until I just said na okay, I'm gonna stop it because this is CCP is happening. Then we, then the thought entered of entering into law school. Mm-hmm. Oh, yun. Na parang sabi ko. When I was doing it, it just doesn't feel right anymore in a perspective na I'm putting my art out there. I, I, I release stuff about, you know, black lives and uh, 
you know, the happenings of COVID and mm. Duterte and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I was able to put dance doon, pero parang mm-hmm. it just doesn't feel right. So, it made it made me contemplate, is this the right time? Is this the right time to, to enter? Mm. If, if I enter now, there's no holding back. Wala na, hindi mo na yung mababawi. Siyempre, pera, tuition, ganyan, wala na. Yeah. So parang yun, gan, ganun ko na siya. Nung, nung sabi ko, I wanna dive in, I dived in and never look back. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so, so it was really like a, a mixture no, of a lot. Kasi one, it was you made adjustments to your just current dance uh, uh, routine, like in terms of how you taught, you said you're teaching for free, right? Um, you know, you were able to sort of start putting out more pieces and things like that. Um, and then at the same time, it also... Sp- the, the the normal the new one the new normal also got you to sort of start thinking about uh just basic overall adjustments in terms of your path like in dance and, right. and how you can be more effective in terms of the what you really want to accomplish which is make an impact right in people's lives right um so like let's talk a little bit about um i guess because i have one thing for me since the since the you know the lockdown sort of hit has been my productivity in terms of as an individual dancer Right, because like sometimes we we get caught up uh, going from class to class or workshop to workshop and teaching that. You know, sometimes you're focused on on getting enough out there for your students that that you don't have enough time to really like focus in on yourself, right? And so, right. would you say that uh, since this sort of happened, you saw uh, like an increase in your productivity as a in terms of exploration as an individual? Um, and uh, if so, how did that sort of affect? I mean. One of the things I wanted to ask as well, and this is more of like a bonus question, which is like, um, you know, how often are you are you practicing to to improve? Is it like every day? Is it has it got, has it increased? Has it decreased? And are you you know still inserting like your workout routine? What does that workout routine look like? Is it specific for dance? So you know, pick, feel free to pick any of these questions and just kind of address them. I would say before law school, before law school, I'm like always dancing, mm. always dancing, always. Uh, putting content out there, just like freestyle and stuff. Also, I was uh, choreographing too, creating creating a bunch of movements as well. I'm, I'm actually always trying to apply what I learned in class, especially groundwork classes, because I, I love the floor so much. So whenever I take groundwork classes, I, there, there are drills that were given to us. Then after that, I create my own personal drills. Mm. A variation of what was taught to us. So, parang ako, kahit mini mini choreo, parang choreo pero pattern yon. Mm. Let's say pattern. I I I I am fond of creating patterns. Kasi mm. na feel ko na with patterns, I can apply it to any music. Mm. Mm. And it was discussed. It was discussed to me by Shadow Shadow Sephiroth. Mm. That's the difference. Dao between choreo and freeze, uh, choreo and patterns in choreo it's just uh, a movement just for that song yes whereas the pattern you can apply that to any song and then when the time comes that the song is slow and they do it slow mm. and then and then at any rate by the two eighths or the third eighth of that pattern you want to do it fast and they do it fast or maybe after the fourth count so people won't think now what you're doing is absolute freestyle they would they would actually not notice that that was a pattern you studied yeah in the room and then yeah. when you when, when they see you dance parang oh, grabe naman yun but ganon they don't know na pattern yeah. mo na pala talaga na ginawa yun so parang that's how i do it before but now i'm into law school things have changed syempre uh-huh. because you know the the load is really different Unlike in legal management back then, I, I mean, just to share, legal management back then, we, we also had law classes, but the readings are not as much as what we have right now. Parang, I know it would sound OA, pero dati, I thought it was OA too. When they said na, yung inaaral nila sa law school dati na for one month, or for parang three weeks, something ganun. Ay, oh, let's say sa legal management na pang one month sa law school parang one week two weeks lang mm-hmm. it, it's true kasi ang bilis ng pacing dito tapos sa amin nun parang hindi naman kami baby pero mas lenient yun yung right word mas lenient sa amin nun 
So ngayon, in comparison with dance, I would say na I use dance to distress myself. I use mm-hmm. dance. And it's really, it's really honest. Dun yung nagustuhan ko when I entered into law school in relation to dance. Because now, I'm not posting, I, I don't know if you've noticed it, but I am not posting as much on my socials about dance. Not because I am not dancing. I am dancing. Mm. But I post only when, it, when it's true. Mm. I post when it's right. Mm. Kasi back then, when I was doing it as a full-time career, it's, it, it demands. It demands for you to post. Because you want, because that, that's the game. That's the name of the game. You want people to see, other than the creative side, the business side, you want people to see that, oh, this is what he's doing. Oh, he's, he's working on this new piece. Oh, he's teaching at here. It's always, uh, lalo na nung pumasok na yung social media era, we mm. use that to our advantage. And mm-hmm. that's the truth. That's the truth on the business side. Mm-hmm. But now I'm, I'm in law school, I'm able to enjoy the personal side again na parang nagkaroon ako ng, ng circle. Like when I started dancing, you asked me, why did, I, why did I dance? How did I choreograph? Because of the personal. And now we're back here again doing the personal stuff that makes me feel good. Mm. So although although I have the skill, although I ganto ganyan, it doesn't matter. What matters is I enjoy and then I study. So whenever I'm done with my with my readings or whatnot, I go to the studio. I celebrate. Yeah. I ce- yeah. I celebrate because I'm done. I'm done yeah. studying. Okay. Yeah. When I don't have time, I okay. I dance here in the room, sweat enough. Okay, sure. <laughs> and then <laughs> now, mm-hmm. okay. Say, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Finish with that. And then now, I'm able to enjoy it more, to say the least. Na parang, if I'm gonna dance two minutes of my time lang, two minutes of, of my time, in a day, imagine that in a day, dati, I dance for like three, four hours. Now, if I get to dance and enjoy it for at least two minutes, or maybe five songs, I don't dance, sure. I'm not, alam mo yun, parang game. Oh, sige, alam mo yun. And, yeah. and I see it with my dance. Na parang pag pinapanood ko ngayon yung mga freestyle ko, I'm, okay, wow. Ngayon ko lang, parang ngayon ko lang ito nakikita na, okay, sige. I mean, I'm not that strict, but this is nice. Parang ganun, alam mo yun. And I'm just fulfilled. So, yun. Yeah, that's good, man. How many, I mean, like you said, sometimes you only get two minutes. So, like, how many hours in a day would you say you, you have to, really dedicate to studying? Oh, majority of your day, I would say. Because, especially now na nasa bahay lang, I feel like, I mean, I'm blessed with professors na hindi naman sila, ano, yung parang masama, in a way. Pero, ako kasi, I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of studying in advance. Mm. I'm, if if there's one thing I learned in dance that I apply in law school now, which I didn't do in legal management because back then I was just starting to dance, is the the the, the element of foundation, the element of good foundation. Because I realized that in 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 dance and law, hindi naman sila nagkakaiba eh. Yeah. Siyempre, people would say nagkakaiba sila kasi this is art. Ito, ibang aspect din to. So, Ako, hindi ko siya ganun tinitignan eh. Parang, because I know how to dance and I know the importance of establishing a good foundation, I already knew in my mind ano yung pinapaso ko. Uh-huh. Alam ko na siya eh. Bago pa ako mag-enroll, bago pa magsimula yung first day, bago pa ibigay yung reading assignments, I already knew in my heart that this is something that would demand me a lot of time and would demand me to to really think and read. And so, I was just able to adjust right away in, in a way na I honestly enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know if people would believe me, but I enjoy it. I enjoy digesting cases. Like, yeah. there's a lot of cases na parang sobrang haba nila, pero parang ako, sige, okay, basa tayo. Tapos minsan, eto, kuya, promise, there are times na when I read this, these cases, Napapapalakpak ako. As in, papalakpak ako. <laughs> you know, 
kasi ang 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 galing ng idea ng Supreme Court like oh ito nagiging ano na tayo. <laughs> ang galing ng idea ng Supreme Court to say the least na parang oo uh, naisip nila yun yeah. tapos parang may isip mo na parang wait tao lang din yun na tapos ako ngayon nag-aaral ako so wait na-apply ko rin yung mentality sa dance dati na it doesn't mean na ako na rin sila Brian sila Kyoni or Chris hindi sila pinanganak na ganyan na kagad they work for it to be that ex that that type of expert. Same mm-hmm. thing with the Supreme Court justices or judges na parang justices. Mm. Mali ako. <laughs> na parang sila nandun sila, they're already an expert of law and now I'm starting to study law and there th- that is not impossible to reach. Uh-huh. Alam mo yon? So parang yeah, yeah. ganun ko rin si tinitignan kaya ako napapalak pa kasi parang wait, tao lang yung yung nagsulat niyang batas na yan, yung nagsulat ng interpretation na yan, tao lang yan. Pero ganun siya ka wise. And so now I'm here studying this thing and so I realize this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, so you know like I guess in in short right it's really like basically you're spending a lot of hours on it on a day-to-day basis but like the realizations that you're getting out of it make it worth it, you know. And <laughs> the the time just sort of passes, right? Kasi para na excite kasi ina aral mo. That's really good, man. And so I mean I guess it's this. Yeah. Another question I kind of want to ask um, before we sort of wrap up is, is um, you know, you've, you know, you, you spent a majority of, of, of the past few years really building up dance. And then now you've got this passion for law. And uh, I mean, would you see that, is this now taking you into a, a different direction? Um, was it uh, unintended? Was it planned? Um, how do you sort of foresee yourself, um, you know, uh, in the, in terms of your your path, whether it's dance or law, um, and maybe you don't have one. Like maybe you could just be in the moment. What's your perspective on that? I would say I would say I'm being in the moment in okay. terms of the dream. Because mm. in terms of dance, I realize na I, I re- this is the best thing that I would say in this video that I know would mean a lot for a lot of people. We all go back to the goal and understanding the goal and it doesn't mean that the goal na you understood dati would still be the goal until now and that that goal changes from time to time from the mm-hmm. people you meet from the experiences that you gain and ako ang na-realize ko nung tinanong ko yung sarili ko what's my goal with dance right now my goal is to explore myself and it mm. doesn't have to be so extravagant like Hollywood extravagant or I don't know how Cirque du Soleil extravagant because I, I've, I've, I've auditioned for Cirque du Soleil. I, I wanted to be there. Oh, Pero I realized now na parang sabi ko, it doesn't have to be that for me. For me. Doon ko nahahanap yung, yung saya na parang now this is what this is my life I, and, and I enjoy it a lot I, I don't teach a lot right now and it makes me happy it makes me happy if I dance and I do a lot of floor works in a day wow it makes me happy yun yung goal ko sa dance ngayon sa salo ako kasi nagtransfer yung hindi naman nagtransfer pero for the lack of better term sige nagtransfer hmm. yung love ko for lo ay yung love ko for dance nagtransfer sa law yung obsession ko sa detail yung obsession ko sa learning nagtransfer sa law tapos nung tinignan ko siya it parang nakasulat na siya sa palms ko <laughs> promise na parang the goal for me when i started to dance back then is i want to i want to bring change i want to do something not for me i don't i don't want to be known as someone na oh, he's at the top, ganyan, he's the best, ganyan, ganyan. Nah, really, it doesn't mean shit. But, I wanna bring change. I wanna do something na parang, alam mo, masyadong poetic, pero when you leave the world, it has to become a better place nung, kesa nung dinatnan mo, parang ganon. Parang ganon yung naisip ko. Yeah. Tapos ngayon, nung transfer ko sa salo, ganon din. Pasok na pasok. So parang sabi ko, this doesn't have to fight for my attention. Mm. Hindi na nila kailangan mag-away ngayon. Kasi dati, kaya ako namili kung loba o sayaw kasi naglalaban sila eh. Parang, ganun ba yun? Pag pinili ko yung sayaw, hindi na ako maglolo. 
Mm. Pag pinili ko ba yung low, iiwan ko na yung sayaw? Ganun na ba yun? Parang ngayon na-realize ko na hindi eh. It, they can coexist if I want them to coexist. And it's my decision. I have to take control of it. Kasi if not, ano, wala na. Sayang yung dream. Sayang yung ano ko, yung gusto ko mga mangyari sa sarili ko. And at the same time, it's just, it's just making sure na, especially with this COVID-19 and all these things happening na hindi natin nakita, I just wanna make a promise to myself na I'm, I'm able to do as much before I, 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 I retire in my life. And retire meaning I'm dead. Mm-hmm. Kasi with, with this happening, the best realization for me is that I'm thankful I'm alive every day. Mm-hmm. Because you never know. Alam mo yun, parang nagugulat kami mga namamatay na kakilala mo, may mga namamatay bigla na hi- mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're healthy tapos biglang wala na. Mm-hmm. And here we are talking and I'm really, that's, that's my realization na parang I, I thank God I'm able to Thank God I'm able to study. Mm-hmm. Thank God the privilege is there for me to be able to learn. Thank God I'm still able to dance. Alam mo yun? So parang ganun ko na siya tinitignan eh. There, there is no one way na. It's just, okay, this is the opportunity I have. I work for it. And the, the, the end goal is to help the society. That's all. I love it, man. There is... There's a lot in there for everyone watching. I think uh, it's a good way, you know, take a look back and just sort of go through it. Like what I love about what you, how you, you know, you, when you say it, it's the thing that I've loved about the way you, I know, finding approach everything is like you, you do it with so much passion. You know what I mean? It's, it's obvious and it's so genuine. And it like when you talk about the learnings and the realizations that you've had, it, it, you know, it just comes off as very, you know, very authentic and very true. And, uh, you know, it's something that I think is helpful for, for um, a lot of people, you know, and, uh, you know, going back to sort of how your journey now, and you were saying, hindi nasa nagalaban, you know, and and that I think is a very important thing for a dancer to sort of realize, because there's always this feeling of like, parang if you don't pursue just dance all the way, it's gonna make it difficult for you. Um, and like, parang you're, you know, maybe you're giving it up or or something like that. And uh, you know, there are gonna be times where you can succeed in a full time dance career. Um, I have found personally, and this is through personal experience, where in you know, uh, I'm able to, to, to manage both. Like I, I, I find a way to just grow in one aspect. And then, you know, to be honest, it, it also is, comes off more liberating sometimes because now the dance is truly like an expression, right? It's not like, but um, I have to do this dance for this gig because that's going to, you know what I mean? Uh, right. but I, I need to do all these classes or I need to do all these workshops. Now there are going to be people who live for that and that's what drives them. And that's also a great thing. So, so, so there's that positive aspect, but then what I want to, you know, but I guess what we can sort of glean from this is, is there is a, a, an upside also to, to, even if you're only dancing less, right. I I think the approach of that is because now you only have less time, you know, um, you're going to appreciate it even more because now it's that moment for you and it's nobody else's moment, just your own. And I think you you sort of go back to like, oh man, the, the ability to just, you know, dance because it's something you want to do um, and not necessarily something you have to do, you know? So I think um, you hit a lot, you hit a lot of great points there. Um, so, you know, obviously you, you, you also mentioned that, you know, how sort of this new normal has really been affecting now your mindset and sort of where your head is going in terms of how you look at dance and, and even law and career and things like that. So I, I guess I, this is something I, I, I typically try to ask people, which is this, you know, obviously, um, and we'll end with this question, which is like, we have a lot of uh, negative uh, effects of the pandemic and COVID and lockdown. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, finances, opportunities, relationships, things like that. Um, from, your, from your experience and, and maybe something you're thinking about, what are, what are the positive takeaways from, from what we're going through right now? Well, that's one. I'm, I think the most positive takeaway is being alive. Mm. Being alive and being still being able to pursue the dreams that you wanna pursue, being able to still express yourself. Because yeah. when we see the situation of people na undergoing COVID, tapos pag may tubo ka na, what's what's left? Alam mo yun parang 
na malulungkot ka na eh, na you are you are there alam mo yun, na parang you're left with no other choice and di ba parang yun yung nakakalungkot eh so when i see things from afar i i i think na i'm alive or we're alive or the people i love the people i'm with is alive and i wish a, a lot of people are more alive as well and i i the positive take away for for this is i wish after this people would appreciate life more and what i mean by life is the physical interaction that we have mm-hmm. kasi na, we're here in a unprecedented time na eto we're doing this interview digital everything's digital right away and i feel like even though we're connecting right now there is there is a bar you know and i wish this is live i wish we could talk about this live and this would mean more not that it mean less but it would mean much more mas ramdam and when you when you go home jaan sa bahay mo kuya or ako when i get home here it may dala-dala kang ibang feeling eh may dala-dala ka na parang shit i i learned a lot from that conversation that's that's great alam mo yon na parang Back then, we don't give much of that. Eh. Parang, ah, we're gonna see each other again soon. Oh, maybe at some dance event, we're gonna see each other again soon. Mm-hmm. When I see creative athlete, I'm gonna see you again. We're gonna talk again soon. Mm-hmm. Diba? Mm-hmm. Pero because of this, pam! Mm-hmm. Uncertainty. We are all unsure when we're gonna see each other safely. Yeah. yeah. We wanna go home and not give it to our families. Diba? Yeah. So parang, yeah. yun yung positive takeaway ko na thankful I'm alive. Yeah. And I think that's the best thing ever. I don't have any more idea on, <laughs> on what I want to be thankful for. A uh, yeah. positive takeaway because I feel like life itself is the best positive takeaway. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, yun. yeah man. I, I agree. I think, uh, you know, it's, a, it's perspective, you know, like you mentioned. Perspective, the appreciation of life. And I think the more that we sort of think about these things, it, it causes us to act, you know, differently. And uh, for the better, hopefully, you know. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, my, my, my uncle would always say is like, uh, one of his favorite moments is, uh, he likes to fly on an airplane and I said, well, and it's one of his favorite times. And I said, why is that? And he just says, you know, sometimes when you're on an airplane, you just, you see such a bigger perspective of, and, and you look at your daily problems and how sometimes, and I'm not saying there aren't big problems, but you know, there are going to be those ty- things that, oh, not pala, the, the problems that I was facing, whether in terms of this, deadline, that, and all of, like, finally, they seem much more small compared to the grand picture of things. And I think, I mean, um, again, when we talk about positive takeaways, I, it's not meant to downplay anybody's struggles right now because they're very real, nice. right? Nice. Um, and everybody's going through challenges. But, you know, if anything, uh, it's really that new perspective on everything, the new appreciation. I think it, get, it gives people to act differently and, 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 and be more mindful of, of you know, their interactions. For me personally, it's been relationships, you know, just how you interact with people, how, uh, like I've spent a lot of time catching up with old friends just because you never know, you know, you never know with, right. with, with the situation that we're in. And, uh, you know, you never really want to be in a position to regret not being able to reach out and, 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 and you know, work on these relationships. So um, great thoughts, man. I love it. That was really <laughs> good, really good stuff. Um, Thank you guys. I hope that uh, like a lot of stuff we went through today was helpful for, for people watching and listening. Um, I guess before we end, uh, is there anything now, I know you said like you're working on law and uh, still doing your dance. Is, is there anything that you wanted to sort of promote or, uh, you know, maybe a shout out for, for what you're working on? Oh, for sure. Um, I, I mean, I want to promote my girlfriend's uh, <laughs> business. Uh, she's working on dog and cat treats. That's slowly di- dehydrated, by the way. That's healthy. So mm. if you want to check it out, you, you go on check uh, Whiskey Tears uh-huh. and Facebook and Instagram. Uh-huh. And um, maybe that would be all. Uh, just check on my socials, uh, Les Paul Science, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Yep. I still release a, a seldom videos. Yeah. But not as much as before, but yeah. it's still there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I might, I might have to hit you up for the, um, you know, I, I saw the Whisketeer stuff. I thought it was originally for cats. And then you just told me now that it's for dogs. So I'm going to, I mean, right. I, have, I have a little Pomeranian running around the house. Uh, right. so I'll definitely message you about that uh, for sure. Sure. Uh, but yeah, everybody check that out. Uh, you've got uh, Les Paul's uh, social media content. If you just want to see his work, uh, we'll put that up here. And then obviously um, his girlfriend's uh, Joe. 
her uh, her business um, for for treats for your animals. So uh, have a look at that. Uh, Les, dude, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was yes. really like a great time to, to catch up, and I I really love like the the little nuggets of of just experience or learnings that uh, people will hopefully take from this. So uh, thank you, man, so much for joining. And uh, thank you, thank you. We'll see everybody next time. Bye. Bye.